So this is um, this is a project I've wanted to um, to share for a long time. I wanted to do this for a long time um, to take a project I'd done in the past um, that stood the test of time and kind of analyze the process to walk you through the decisions we made, how we uh, arrived at them, and then to see how um, how that client's doing now. <music> So this is a mortgage broker. I worked with um, two, almost three years ago. And at the time, the style of the project felt a little bit outside my comfort zone. Um, so quite, um, quite modern um, and edgy, but not the, not the typical luxury um, branding that I'd been doing at the time. Um, so I was quite happy with the process, um, the way we worked through this together. And I just wanted to share this, take you through it, and hopefully you pick up some, um, some useful insights along the way. So if we dive in, um, this is um, JB Mortgages. So they're based in, um, in England, um, mid to high end clients they're looking to work with. So not super rich, exclusive sales. Um, and visibility online was quite important to them as well. So there was a lot we wanted to convey in the logo. We wanted to make sure it felt um, all encompassing, approachable um, and simple uh, while indicating um, just what they do and the value they bring. And I think we, uh, we accomplished that. We created something that looks really distinct. Um, if we flick through, this is the end result, the brand manual. Um, in fact, let, let's save that have a look through at the end but this is the logo and I'll also show you the, uh, the stationery we created so this is the look and the feel of a brand and although we won't go through um, the web design process this is the website we created for JB Mortgages um, so, so pretty nice even looking back three years later I think that's aged well um, as as good brand should. Um, so let's take you through this. First of all, um, this is what James, that's the owner, um, kindly sent across to me uh, to begin working with. So a page from his notebook. Um, I think those are key words he was thinking of using on the website. You can see along the left there, um, just some, some rough ideas he had and then he sent me this, um, this little sketch he put together himself. So this was the idea he had in mind. Um, I think he used some kind of logo software to, to try to create this, as clients sometimes will. Um, it gave me an idea of what he was looking for. I seem to remember he was quite keen on the color blue being used. He had a preference for that, so he wanted me to work that in somehow. And actually, blue is used for a lot of banks, brokers. It's, uh, it's a good symbol of trust. So he was on the, the right path there. Uh, so obviously um, that's not much to go by. And as a designer, you've got to really um, sometimes take the initiative in creating a brief from your client. So maybe in the past, um, a client would send you a detailed brief, but these days you've really got to make sure you ask the right questions that you prompt the client yourself. So I'm gonna open and oh my goodness, this, this has not aged well. Um, this is three years ago, the way I presented my uh, research and strategy. It's changed now, it's better. You'll have to trust me on that. Um, so we're gonna ignore, there was some keyword research for AdWords. Competitors, um, this is important. We had a little look through to see um, who had the most visibility for someone making a search in the kind of area that James covered. So this is a, a general competitive audit um, that I expect you do for, for any um, branding project. And we had a look at these guys too, Fox Davidson, just to scope out the playing field to see what others are doing, what context is James competing in. And when someone's making a search for deciding which broker will be right for them, um, how uh, how loud, how outspoken does James' brand have to appear 
um, to successfully stand above the others. Um, in this context, actually not very loud. Um, James did want to seem quite vibrant, quite approachable, um, but a lot of these other brands, they're quite corporate, um, fairly subdued. There are little splashes of color. And this one here, Alexander Hall, I mean, that's a very bright, vivid color um, compared to the schemes others are using. So yeah, it's something to bear in mind, context is everything. And if you're designing for a mortgage broker, you can't rely on um, context you've maybe looked at or you're familiar with before if you work on luxury brands or if you've worked in different industries. Um, so always start the project with this. Uh, and this is what we did together. So I presented this to James. You can see he's actually written his own annotation on it. So this page here, we've got uh, visual style and tone. So just for logos, um, I've grabbed them from different websites to give him a, uh, an overview uh, of uh, the kind of logos others are using, other mortgage brokers. So I asked them generally, pick three logos that you really like and three logos that you, you dislike or even that you hate, um, looking for strong reactions. Um, and then we have a discussion on the phone and, and hopefully they're able to explain why. Um, so instead of I, I just don't like that, unable to pinpoint why, um, the real usefulness comes if they can say, well, I, I don't think the font works or I hate the color or it looks too busy. That really steers you um, in a clear direction when you're starting the project. Because although you want to present what's best for the client, um, you've really got to um, you've got to take their taste into account. And if they have a strong um, objection to something, you don't really want to pitch that. It has to feel right for them, uh, especially because this is JB uh, Mortgages. So it's James's own name on the brand. He has to feel uh, comfortable with it. If we go on to the next page, this is perhaps the most important one before you start a design project, um, the visual style and the tone. So you've got to, um, and, and this won't happen in 10 minutes. Uh, this takes a little bit of discussion. You've got to iron out what are the key messages? What are the goals of this brand? What do you want it to communicate? Um, if you could, the way I describe it, if you could almost um, inject thoughts into someone's head, if you could inject just short, snappy, maybe five, six, um, word sentences into someone's head subliminally about your brand, uh, what would they be? What messages would you use? What would you reassure them of? Uh, what expectation would you create? So you can see here for JB Mortgages, key messages, save money. If you work with me, you're gonna save money. You're gonna receive personal attention and I'm gonna make it a smooth and easier process as possible. So uh, I think we did a good job refining those key messages uh, to something potent there. And they have to be, um, they have to be fairly simple. A complex message um, you're gonna find very difficult to convey in branding with iconography and, and other techniques. Um, so the simpler, the better. Then if you look above, um, tone, is a, a little more, uh, not subjective, but it's, it's a little less specific. Um, this is the general feel of a brand. So we wanted it to feel modern, um, to feel very professional, uh, serious, understated. Uh, you, you get the idea there. Brainstorming. Um, this isn't always necessary if uh, the client has a really clear idea of perhaps um, symbolism they'd like to use or like you to explore. But this is a great exercise just to get onto paper, um, just with simple words before you, you start sketching anything, um, what kind of elements might you use? So for a mortgage broker, um, we've got loans, money, contracts, deals, all the kind of things that might come to your mind um, that we can play on. And combining these um, literal symbols with what we looked at on the previous page, the style and the tone, you've then given yourself a really clear direction for what to explore visually. So once this is done, 
um, you're ready to go into the initial concepts. And uh, that's what I did with James. So if we open this first of all, um, I sketched and I believe I did some quick digital sketching, just throwing shapes together. Um, some prefer to, to sketch on pen and paper, and I do that for some of my projects, uh, actually more of them now. Um, but at the time, for geometric shapes, I find it much easier and faster to throw them together um, in Illustrator and then to, to look at the shape and form um, like this. I, I find that's much faster than trying to sketch them out. Um, so let's have a look through and see some different ideas forming here and actually at the top and this was just one quick idea I think I've thrown together that was actually the concept we ended up using so you can see something to do with a graph that was my thinking originally and then well what if this graph was a little more um, if it was modernized if it was almost digitalized and you can see where that concept starts to uh, to find its feet um, but because of the sketch James had provided, if we go back to what he sent me, um, there was this idea of showing houses or buildings. Um, he really wanted that to come across, but he is a mortgage broker, but for um, houses and properties. So that steered the, um, the concepts we explored quite heavily. And you can see right from the outset, it's symbolism based on roofs, houses, um, some cityscape shapes there and what I don't think had dawned on me at the time was that actually these two concepts were completely compatible um, you see the graph concept above does look like uh, in loose terms um, the outline of blocks of flats in the city and where did James want to trade specifically um, well in the city in London um, where uh, there are, of course, large numbers of flats. So that, that concept, we almost missed it. Um, and thankfully, when we discussed this, we realized, hey, actually, that concept's perfect. It's simple. But all of these ideas are represented there um, in a literal or an abstract way. Uh, if we look through the next pages, so first I focused just on the symbol and I knew this brand had to have a, a symbol that was set out in, um, in our agreement. Now we start looking at fonts. Um, so which font was appropriate? And if you were to flip between this and the document where we looked at style, tone, you can see uh, some of these aren't really appropriate. Um, modern, approachable, um, you can see some fonts are far more suitable than others. But the reason I do this is if you send the client a page of um, perfectly suited, very similar fonts, they'll find it very hard to differentiate um, or to articulate the differences. Um, it, it can actually do more harm than good. So I find it's useful sometimes to throw in some examples uh, like this one here. You've got a, a really um, almost classical font seeing that alongside the modern it helps them to make that separation to see that contrast and ah okay this one works better it's more modern because i can see it's more rounded um, it's softer than the, the classic typeface next to it so i find that's a useful practice uh, next we start combining the two um, so again this for me this is the equivalent of i think most designers with their sketchbook um, you know, powering through, spending a, a few hours sketching out ideas, just getting ideas from your brain um, onto something tangible. So this is my equivalent. I find uh, it's a little faster. As I say, for more complex um, shapes or concepts, I, I will sketch out. And I think the iPad Pro is great for that. If you've got the iPad with um, the Apple Pencil, it's fantastic. And uh, that really fits nicely into your workflow. Um, but here I am throwing some of these, these different ideas together, now combining some of the, um, the fonts and the type lockups with the symbols we were exploring. And you can see, although it's, it's definitely had some modification um, to reach the final version, 
that first stab at the concept we went with here, um, it's not a million miles away. I think we had quite a clear idea um, when we saw it like this with a, the rounded text together with the, um, the buildings or the graph formed by little dots. It all just worked together so nicely. Rounded elements with rounded font, uh, modern, approachable. So I think when we saw this, um, we had a, a fairly clear winner in mind, but we actually explored some other concepts as well. Um, it took a little bit of a push to move James away from the, like the literal outline of roofs or houses. So you can see in the document, I actually featured that concept there because I, I thought it worked so well. Then I also featured what I felt was um, the best of these rooftop concepts. So I tried to keep it simple. Um, you've got a bit of a transparency overlap going on there. Not sure how well that would have worked in practice, um, but I like to do that to kind of feature, um, to show everything. Um, not all designers do that. Some of them will show just four, five, six concepts that perhaps has agreed. I like to show the work that's gone into it, the bits and pieces, because sometimes they'll pick up on something um, that they really like, that they'd like to develop further. And I think also, uh, if you look at it this way, if I spent uh, maybe a week coming up with different ideas before getting back to James, and then what I presented him was two pages, was just this and this, um, there's not the same value in that. Um, where if you see the work that's gone into it, the different ideas that have been explored, um, personally, I, I think it helps the client to appreciate you've not tried to um, you know, spend 20 minutes to come up with a solution. You've really tried different options, but you're, what you're showing them is, is kind of the best of the best. Um, so that's, a, that's another tip, um, a, a trick that I use. So that takes us to the end of the initial concepts. Let's open the next PDF here, and you can see what we decided to bring forward. So something I've definitely adjusted in my workflow um, since this project, I wouldn't take, sometimes I won't even take two concepts forward. Now James had budgeted and had paid for that, um, but really if you, can, if you can pick a strong winner from the beginning and you want, you want most of your time on this project, to be spent refining the concept you're actually gonna use. Um, to take two or three horses forward, just to pick one winner. Um, I know there's an argument for that, but I think that's quite um, a time expensive way um, to, to weigh up what works best. I think if you can identify the strongest concept, focus and spend the time on that, that that's a much better use of your time uh, and the client's time. Um, but looking now at this um, develop PDF, so we've got a page of the concepts we've taken forward here. I think we began to look at supporting type and taglines. And now we start to work some color into the chosen concept. Um, and James really liked this. As soon as he saw the blues working in, um, this really sold him. So you can see here, um, I've taken the um, I'm taking the symbol we've created for the main logo, um, the brand mark, and I've tried to create some variations of it um, to give the brand some some complementary elements. And you'll see if we flick back to the um, the brand collateral we created, even the website, this is really useful. Um, if you can put this together. It gives a real, like a, a richness to the brand. Um, just as when you look for a consistent color scheme, it feels nice and tied in and professional. If you have just these little, almost design nuggets, these little elements, these custom elements, you can start repeating um, just to give it that coherent, professional look and feel. Um, it's not for every project, and there's an argument for keeping it simple. Um, but sometimes it really works, and I, I think it worked here with James. So we've got some complementary graphics. And then we began looking at variations. Um, again, I think James was keen to have 
maybe something closer to his original sketch. Um, would that work? Could we look at my concept but pushed a little closer to his original idea? So we did that here. Um, and I, I don't think it works particularly well. So we, we've stuck with the original concept. This I don't even want to comment on. Um, it shows sometimes you, um, you can look at something for too long and even, even considering the idea um, of using something like this, it's just, uh, it's childish really in comparison to the, the concept we went for. This concept, not so bad. And uh, we looked at refining it, actually spent a bit of time refining it geometrically, seeing if we could, could curve it, could, um, could take some of the sharp edges off. Um, but it, it really didn't work as well as this one. This was, was clearly the winner. So um, let's go to the final development phase. And here you'll see once we once we've committed and I now try to do this much earlier on in projects once we know we have a winning concept um, put it under the microscope spend as much time as you can trying to really refine it balance it look at balancing it optically look at balancing it geometrically um, I know sometimes you'll see designers um, and they show these kind of grids and I may have done something like this here with one of the concepts and they'll use rule of thirds. Um, every, um, every width will be either one third or two thirds of another, and it's all perfectly geometrically balanced. And um, that does work. Our brains perceive that as, um, as near perfection, so we're attracted to it. But sometimes I think we forget to, um, to balance things optically. So I like to start with that, get it looking, looking good optically, and then I'll spend the time, um, if I need to, uh, balancing it geometrically and making sure everything's nice and even and perfectly proportioned. Um, but please don't spend your time doing those bits too early because if a client doesn't go with that variation of your concept, it's quite a time consuming process. Um, so here we have the, uh, the chosen concept we start looking at slight variations in the spacing, in the font weight, some variations in um, the brand mark itself. And actually, with these, these huge jumps, these big steps between one um, block and the next, um, it is quite jarring. It doesn't feel quite cohesive enough and it does look a little bit too much like um, a vanilla bar graph um, replaced with dots. So we really like this idea um, of making it less blocky, of putting in, not for every, not for every tower, um, but alternating towers, you've got this little extra step here. And that just, just gives it that extra customization, makes it feel a little bit less, less obvious. Um, again, we played with some of the um, accompanying brand elements we might use. And these are great because for James, um, there's definitely a, a digital uh, monetary kind of accounting element to what he does. So this really helps to kind of theme his website and his work um, in, in a way that feels professional. And we've got some more of that here. So lots of supporting elements for him to play with. And then we did look at the, um, the color palette. Although we thought we knew what we needed, um, now we started to really look at, um, we can't just say we're gonna use blue. What blue will we use? Um, what colors will we use along with that blue? And um, obviously we arrived at these two shades of blue uh, together with quite a, a steely gray and we thought that that gave it the right tone. Uh, if we keep scrolling through, so that's the, that's the color palette, the font, the lockup, and the brand mark we've gone for. Um, this is important that you create a variation that can be shown, um, I think sometimes shown with the brand color as the primary background. 
Um, there are many situations where you, you need the impact of showing that brand color um, powerfully. And if your brand mark won't reverse, um, you're not gonna be able to do that. So that's an important factor to consider. And then we've also created um, a dark version. So he's got three variations of the logo. Um, they feel like they're the same, but obviously the colors are not just reversing. Um, we're swapping the orders just to make sure it, it conveys the same feeling, no matter what background you're showing that on. So there we have all the, um, the selected colors there. This was the business card we created. You can see we've pulled on that little decorative element at the bottom there. Complement slips. And then of course, as we looked at earlier, you've got the, um, the full stationary lockup here, which, um, which looks pretty good. And JB Mortgages is doing really well. It's been a big success. I think they've grown their team now um, from just James to, um, to three people, or perhaps four, actually. Um, so they're, they're doing fantastically well. Um, I'd like to think the branding um, has helped them and the presence of their website. Um, but it's nice to look back at a project to see what worked and why it worked. And uh, one last thing I'll show you before we go is the brand manual. This is how I like to, um, to present it to them. So instead of just sending a folder with a few logo files thrown in, um, you should be doing this. Um, lay it out in a way that's pleasant, um, that harmonizes well with a brand, and make sure you're explaining what you're giving to the client, how to use it. And this has such um, an increased sense of value to just, um, just sending them a zip with a few files in. So if we look through this, We've got that nice um, logo and a decorative element at the front. I've given him a, a contents page. Little explanation of the brand and why it's so important. The logo itself and um, a little, almost a, a backstory about that just to, to make that feel, um, feel relevant and to convey why that's, that's so important. Variations of a logo, how to use them. Some more usage guidelines, full color. Um, we're not gonna use a black and white version of this. Um, it could easily be grayscaled, but James believes um, he's not ever gonna advertise a newspaper, so that wasn't necessary. Spacing. Color palette and tints. I like to include that if I can. There are some situations where you, you need a tinted color rather than the full thing. Typefaces, um, and I now importantly include where to license these. Um, otherwise that can cause problems for your client and they won't always wanna come back to you to create things in line with their brand identity. They'll want the ability to create items themselves. Um, so include that, include links where you can license these. And of course you should be uh, discussing if you're using any premium fonts, uh, make sure the client's aware of the cost for licensing those. You don't want them to have to license um, a 500 pound font um, that they weren't aware of. Um, that's gonna leave a, a really bitter taste in their mouths. We've got the other supporting uh, graphic elements there, which are looking good and uh, then a, a few taglines we created, the stationery, the website, and some more stationery. Uh, the website guide I won't share uh, because that really touches on something different. But um, I hope it's been useful to you. Um, it's interesting for me actually, three years later to look back and um, a lot of my process has changed on the whole, I think this was, um, this was successful. Um, the creative process kind of brought out a really strong concept um, that was simple, but it's worked and it stood the test of time. So I hope you got some insights from, um, from looking through this. If you have any questions, um, please post something in the comments below. And uh, if you like what you saw, please subscribe.